All right, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Public Utility District number one of Skagit County Board of Commissioners meeting. It is April 11th. The time is 4.35 p.m. And would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, hopefully Commissioner Miller is joining us shortly. He did indicate he was running about 10 minutes late. Um, I'd be looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda. A motion to approve the consent agenda. We have a motion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. At this time, I would invite members of the audience wishing to speak to step forward. And if you're on Zoom, if you could use the raise your hand function. And seeing none, we will move to the general manager's report and George. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Good afternoon. Update on a few activities going on around the district. So yesterday we had uh, a new billing clerk start. So if you recall, about a month ago, a billing clerk had started. Um, there was an issue with some vacation that was planned and a uh, request to extend that. And so um, Brian and Sharon talked with our billing clerk and just decided it wasn't going to work out. So we went to the, um, the same pool of candidates that we had when we hired that person, went to the second place finisher, and she accepted. So Mackenzie Gant started yesterday. Uh, few things that are going on community relations side that I think are worth noting. So the Mount Vernon High School Science Night is next week, April 20th. On April 22nd, you can see the Thirst Buster broken out for the first time this year. First time in three years at the Tulip Run. So put your sneakers on, you'll see Shannon there. And then uh, May 7th to 13th is AWWA Drinking Water Week. And we're going to be holding public tours up at the water treatment plant. We did that pre-pandemic, and it was very successful. Had a lot of people requesting uh, requesting tours. So that's going to be on May 11th that we're going to hold tours up there. And the sign-up will be available soon on our website. Um, other stuff that's going on. Um, PUD meetings are occurring this week. But uh, like Commissioner Hamburg said earlier, you can attend virtually. They're doing them by Zoom as well as in person. So if you're interested in going. Um, I am making a presentation at the Cedro Woolies Council meeting tomorrow for my annual update to their council. While that is going on, uh, our MOU for the play fields is going in front of the Mount Vernon City Council. Uh, it's on their agenda tomorrow. So if all goes well, it will allow us to start construction of our new facility uh, later this summer and break ground in August at the earliest, which is good. And it gives us uh, another 15 year easement on our Sky Ridge tank to be able to decide what to do with that. So thanks to Pete Gilbert for working with the city attorney and getting all that ironed out. I think the agreement looks really good and hopefully it passes tomorrow. Um, I've got another department coffee chat, and this is the last one on the first round of chats, and that's gonna happen next Tuesday morning with finance, HR, and a couple of operation staff that didn't get to make it. And next Friday, April 21st, we'll send the commissioners a formal notice, but if we haven't already, but Rick Larson is scheduled to come for a tour that day. We don't have details, we don't have the time as of yet. This was deferred from the last one where he had to cancel at the last minute. But April 21st is um, the scheduled date as of now, and we'll get more details as we get closer. So uh, Shannon's gonna put out a notice of quorum just in case we get more than one commissioner that wants to be there. Very good. That's all that I have, unless there's any questions. Any questions? 
All right, so with that, looks like operations department update. And I don't know if you've changed your name, but the Skagit Valley Herald seems to think so. Mike yeah. Buck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's just more of an update on what's going on in some of the different areas here today. Just got a call from Tyrone to get some parts we got to get to the job of the venture. And so got some issues trying to tie that in today. So Mark's going to take care of that. They're trying to wrap up. They haven't got off the job site yet right. this afternoon. Oh, yeah. okay. So um, some of the things going on at the water treatment plant right now, looking back on some of the budget things, um, we are in the middle of upgrading the, the SRD PLC right now at the Cat River Diversion that was in the budget from 2021, been carried over and been like a year waiting for parts to get this thing up and rolling. So parts are all here, been working on that. Same with the uh, water treatment plant alarms, that's going in soon. And we're also right in the middle of the chlorine and carbon dioxide alarm integration, which has been waiting for parts and running new wiring and conduit and numerous other things and treatment plants. Those are all three in motion right now. And we just ordered a riding mower, which hopefully we'll be getting this week. One of the things that was in the budget this year was the uh, pisometer data loggers. And we had a consultant come up and try different various devices in the pisometers in the dams, and all of them were too big that the pisometer piping in the dams aren't big enough. So that doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. So that plan's been changed. Most people have probably noticed the reservoir is a little lower than normal this year. We're down a bit. Uh, been a little bit of recovery the last few days. We have taken water from Gilligan and Munt the last couple of days. Munt has just barely been over the line. It's been on and off the last couple of days. Gilligan seems to still be producing. Make a little bit of comeback there. But uh, we're just hoping for some some melt off the the storms we've been having this winter with just short bursts of rain for two or three days doesn't really do us much good by the time you get over the stream level then it's back below again by the time you go up there and turn the valves on and off it's almost not worth going up there and cycling them and uh, again we're hoping for some good uh, snow melt off and today probably helped quite a bit that rain today will end up probably keeping Gilligan open again for another day hopefully. And again, the PLC is being replaced at the XRD. It's almost complete uh, next few days, hopefully. And then a few more loose ends need to be buttoned up. And if all that goes as planned, we should have the pumps back on by the end of the month and start pumping from the river with, with at least two pumps, maybe three. And then the new pumps that are coming to be swapped out with the old ones won't be here until October, it appears at this point. So looking at uh, Jamie's. Jamie has an extensive list of, of Excel spreadsheets and rain tracking, stream tracking, and so forth. But if you look at just the, the average level of the reservoir in the last five years is along here. Then this is the average monthly totals for rain through the fall and then early the spring. And uh, you can see the, can't see it really well, but you can just tell by the graphing that we're behind for January, February. March is pretty close. And so far in April, we were behind by a bit, but only halfway through the month. But the decline in the reservoir has been, I think, also from November and December. <clears throat> November and December being a little bit drier than typical as well. But again, we're hoping to uh, make some gains back on that. So the PLCs at the SRD we're talking about the main the main PLC got replaced up here. It was an old Slick 500 that was original and out of date, out of service, out of support. I guess you could call it. <clears throat> These are the soft starts that are in the cabinets. This device right here is a device net communicating device that tells all the, basically speaks back to the PLC, telling the PLC what the soft starts are doing and all the, all the different information from the motors when they're running. This ran on what's called a device net protocol, which is strangely enough, no longer supported. So part of it was to swap out these devices and they ran on an old cable type system and now they're gonna be ethernet. So we had to pull new ethernet wire in to all the different devices as part of this project. Um, the water quality department, we have two areas are gonna have PFOS testing this year. 
Marble Mountain Alger. Um, again, from the rules, that's strictly investigative at this point. And if we were to find it, there's really no treatment rules in place, except for having to inform the customers that, there is, that it is in their water. Um, these were just tested by DOH, recommended these two sites. There wasn't any kind of criteria that led to these two, but if any of them we have to be worried about, it might be Alger, seems I was near an old landfill, but we'll, we'll see once the samples are taken. And Amelia is working on the consumer confidence report information, and she's going to be a moderator at the Northwest Regional Conference for the water quality portion of it over there. Mike, have those been tested for PFAS before? Or? No, no, we've we've had we've had the ability to test, but as Amelia and I have both discussed, it's and kind of you don't want to discover something if you don't. There's no way to treat it anyway, so right. We'll test them when we're told to test them. That's expensive too. Yeah. Testing the three boxes. Yeah. Uh, distribution. A couple of things in the line items here. We're going to do the annual reservoir cleaning. We budgeted twenty five thousand. We've got a bid back for thirteen, a little under thirteen thousand this year to do it, which was kind of surprising. <laughs> um, but we. Uh, Kurt checked back with them and said, are you sure you understand the numbers and all that? And they're like, yeah, no, we're good. Okay. Because one of them is Division Street. It's never been had a diverter before. Division Street has um, dozens of columns and they're, they're going to have to wander around to do the floor cleaning and all that. But and that's just one of the five or seven reservoirs we have on the list. But okay. They were fine with the bid, so bring on. And then uh, reservoir cathodic protection was a line item and that's uh, part of our Northwest corrosion contract that goes on for three years for them putting new anodes and keeping all the cathodic protection up to date in the steel reservoirs that we have. The Fox Road PRV is part of the, the new transmission line job and this pressure reducing valve station feeds, <clears throat> feeds Big Lake, all three reservoirs at Big Lake and Clear Lake. And now this is all operational via SCADA, where before it was manholes, and the guys would literally have to open the manhole, retrieval gear, blowers, get down in there, turn the wrench a quarter turn, get out. A few days later, when the weather changed and the temperature changed back in there again, turn it back, turn it on, it's in and out of these vaults um, several times in the summertime. Don't forget to mention there are three feet from the fog line. Uh, yeah, plus around the fog line of Beaver Lake Road, where there's uh, the traders coming from the quarry all day long and they're underwater in the winter and all those different things. So, this site got moved as part of this transmission line. These uh, got moved a little bit higher ground. And now they also have uh, <clears throat> controllability on them through SCADA so the guys can do it remotely through SCADA, not the the vaults at all. So, safety factor, the efficiency of not going in and out of there physically multiple times a year. Um, the water quality, this will allow the tanks to, to drop and fill rather than just kind of make them right on a set point like these to do with an old pressure reducing valve. So these will open and shut and allow the tanks to fluctuate and keep the water quality better as well and the reliability. <clears throat> so this is what the PRV looks like. It's basically the standard PRV like any other ones, except we have pressure transmitters on the inlet and the outlet, giving them feedback so the guys know what the pressures are out there on both sides. Uh, open or closed indicator, solenoids on the piloting, which is what opens and closes the valve and um, allows it to flow or not flow. And again, these guys used to have to hop down in these vaults and turn the pilot on them back in the earlier days. So this is a huge advancement for us. You guys don't have to go out and do this and be able to also visual, see it remotely, um, to be able to see the tank levels and the pressures is also an added bonus. A couple of the maintenance projects that have come up is the Sky Ridge Reservoir it was on the capital plan, Sky Ridge uh, pipe replacement job, and uh, LaVenture and Hogue Road. The Sky Ridge project is about halfway done, and uh, the LaVenture was supposed to be wrapped up. Well, not wrapped up. The final tie-in happened today. There's still some restoration stuff has to happen, but both of those are well on their way. The LaVenture and Hogue Road project has been very very challenging. It's had, we've had to go eight feet deep because of all the utilities that were in there. Um, the phone company couldn't really give you a quantity of how many conduit they had there. They weren't sure how many conduit, how many lines, what the depth was. So 
a lot of that was exploratory and we ended up having to go down to basically double our depth we're down at eight feet when all this stuff in was two underneath everything a lot of unmarked utilities uh traffic near misses we had people blow through the cones yesterday some person blew through the cones yesterday and a couple of near misses up there with traffic and uh it's just it's been a very challenging project for these guys but they've they've done well and persevered but it's been uh been difficult then the sky ridge project the first half of it got done and then they've sent the whole crew up there and did all three tie-ins and 11 services all in one day which was a pretty big feat as well <laughs> so the guys have been doing really Doing really well lately. It's been a tough job. You can see some of the stuff they've had to work <clears throat> work through and around with conduits and gas lines, and um, a lot of the trenches had to be so narrow due to the the closest of the fog lines and the sidewalks. You can't get a trench box in there. And then some of these places, they've we only been able to dig a ditch a foot wide to put in one foot wide pipe, and uh, shoring, just temporary shoring in the whole thing, and. Again, it's been, uh, been a lot of challenges up there, but they've been doing a really good job. Lots of stuff on the ground. Those are all telephone banks there. They look like they're all on top of each other, but the, the horizontal spread between that one and the one over there is like 10 feet. They look like they're stacked on top of each other, but they're in this conduit bank. Uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of things are working around. The fire hydrant maintenance projects, the all the C. DeWilliam and Mount Vernon hydrants have all been completed. The inspections have been completed for the year. Uh, the next thing is just wait for the warmer weather so they can prep the hydrants and get them painted. But all the inspections are done for the quarters this year. Meters, as we've seen in the budget every year, there's an ongoing uh, dollar figure there for the transmitters. The guys are still. About three weeks ago, they were behind 400 units that were dead, and we had 400 units show up. And I think they've all been replaced since then. Maybe Sharon could know there's more, but I think they've all been replaced since then. But at one time a few weeks ago, there was 400 of them that were dead. We're starting to be a little bit more steady on arrivals and shipments from Badger, so it's going a little bit better lately. We catch up pretty quick. Those, those were our order last June. Yeah. So the first wow. 200 came from last June's order, and uh, about nine months later, but things are a little bit better. The second 200 didn't take less. Yeah. <laughs> um, why did I put that in there twice? Stand by Jensen. Let's use anything else in there that was already in there. I guess those are just the same. The same projects that the operational projects that Kurt's been working on for the most part up there on the at the reservoir getting those things ramrodded and going through. And again, this is the PLC replacement with the this is what the new panels look like on the front. The consultant or the yeah, consultant, I guess, basically brought a whole new tray front that has this already built into it. All the controls and the wiring was already all done. So basically they're swapping out the panels. And it had to be a uh, guy that was able to work in high voltage yeah. situation to do those things. A guy from Rockwell. There he went on slides. What's that one? Clearwell painting. Ah, yes, Clearwell painting. So the bid we got last year was uh, 160,000 from one contractor and didn't get any other bids. I don't think last fall, so it was kind of our target number. Fortunately, uh, got a better number than that moving forward. Good uh, dog protection. That's what he's talking about. That the potlash RO replacement. We're going to get a consultant on board this spring, hopefully coming up soon to start looking at the replacement of that. Uh, the pumps and motors are again going to be this fall. The valve actuators. We're looking at the the valve actuators actually open on the back side of the pumps. The pump from the SRD. There's some issues with those being uh, reliable and, and functional. We're looking at some uh, better methods of controlling those as well. That's in process now too. So the painting of the Clearwell, uh, there's been some other bids come in and got one between 85 and 90,000. So it's, it's looking a lot better. Same thing, asked them to make sure if they were okay with it and comfortable with passing all the specs and they were confident. And, Seemed, uh, seemed fine, so we should save a good chunk of money on that project as well. 
<clears throat> so, uh, going to the fleet. There's a few things on the list for this year as well. We still need to replace the plasma cutter. We're still looking to get this small trailer. One of the things we looked at was a directional drill to drill our own long services. Um, but we've gotten to the point now where most of our services are type three, where either just drop it in a meter or put in a yoke. So we're not doing very many long services. And with the with the kind of the economy downturn, we've seen less services coming overall. So I think we're going to delay or maybe not even get the directional drill in the future at all. But we're definitely going to delay, delay it for this year, not get it this year. And again, maybe not at all, depending on how things turn in the building industry. The RC mower we already have, hydro truck, we're still waiting on kind of trying to decide there as well. The VAC truck, we were going to ask for the monies next year. It's on the annual replacement schedule. But I've been working with um, the VAC truck supplier, and we had a we had a uh, demonstration done by the VAC truck supplier. They have purchased 20 chassis last year and have builds that they can build out to the next year and a half before they're out of chassis. And I recommend that we get one now, or at least order one now, because if we don't and we wait and it comes to order another cabin chassis, and we end up like we did with the service truck when we waited two years, we can get a cabin chassis. So if we have the ability to get one now, I recommend we move forward on doing that and getting at least an order placed. If we're able to get ours worked into one this fall, we can maybe get one by this winter. And if not, the very worst scenario is we'll get a build done the second quarter of next year, which is still a year from now, but we're better than two or three years from now waiting for it. So um, I'd like to come forward next week with possibly a, a budget amendment on that. Same with uh, an excavator. We have an excavator we bought in 2018 that at the time we did a lot of uh, services with, but again, our service installations have changed a bit in the last few years. That machine to this day right now is still worth what we paid for, maybe even more. So I'm looking at potentially selling that excavator and buying a 309 Caterpillar like we have now that we can lay pipe with. Since uh, Jay, correct me if I'm wrong, we are unable to use our boom truck for laying pipe like we used to since we have to have our outriggers out so far, can't get close enough to the dish. So now we're laying pipe with an excavator and we only have one to dig and then be one to help lay pipe. Um, we can also use it for, it'll have the hydraulics for the mowing and, and pipe laying and also be another digging machine. So looking at changing a few things and trying to recoup on some of our investments and invest wisely moving forward. Um, we're the excavator. If we ordered the excavator today, it's still be six months before we got one. January 1st, the, the back truck and the excavator both are probably going up five to seven percent. And on those big ticket items, we've got our buying this year, saving that five or eight percent this year than next year. Um, there our existing back truck has 8,000 working hours on the blower and the and the mechanical parts of it. About a year ago, we had to put $40,000 into rebuilding the blower on it. And again, it has 8,000 hours on it. It's a 2007 that we bought used in 2009. Um, we use it daily. Um, we have two of those, right? Yeah. We so do you surplus this one? Is there any value in it? Yes, this needs to be traded in or sold. Okay. Yeah. And um, again, kind of referring back to this LeVenture job, a lot of this, I shouldn't say a lot, but portions of this job were undiggable with a with a machine just due to the trench restrictions and so forth. And a lot of it had to be done with the vacuum. I saw, I saw it yeah. numerous times. Yeah. And it just, unfortunately, yeah. it's, it's not the fastest way to do it, but sometimes that's the only way you can do it. And the the newer machine that we'd be looking at, this, this one here is a bigger, 27 inches of vacuum compared to like 18 or 19 inches we have now. This one is considered a true hydro excavator. This thing is meant to move material. It's not a jet rotter for like doing culverts and stuff like that. This is this is meant for hydro excavation. And it's quite a machine, but it's quite an investment. But at the same time, it's kind of what we're turning to nowadays, and it's a necessary piece of equipment. So what year's our other one? It's got to be about a two. I didn't look at the numbers. It's got to be about a 2000, 
15 or 16, I'm going to say. Yeah. But again, just re, refocusing on that. It's, it was going to be asked for next year anyway, but I, I propose we move it ahead just for time and time and money. So what's the number of years expectancy on on those? I think it's more based on the hours of the units. So when you start putting the hours on the on the blowers and stuff, and again, the wearables, you're gonna start putting 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars into the the fans and the blowers. So the truck's only got 47,000 miles on it, but you don't travel very far. It's just it's the working part of the unit, like a like an excavator, you know, so it doesn't get any miles on it, but just the mechanics running all running all the time. Do you know how many hours the newer one has on it? I don't. I don't know the newer one. They both go out. They both go out probably three days a week. One of them, there's probably one gone five days a week, and oftentimes both at the same time. At the same time. Yeah. Is, is the other one within the current capital facilities plan for replacement? <laughs> yeah. We'll be looking at that based on the hours now and, and put it out there as okay. well. Yeah. And again, with the with the job on the bench, or just even potholing now, we have to pothole everything. And when you're saw cutting, even vacuuming up your slurry, I mean, they're 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 used every day in one manner or another. And that's it. Unless you have any questions. So we'll have some more discussion specifically about the fleet at the next meeting. Um, should be a memo in there, and then we can have conversation about moving them up, doing a budget amendment, timing for ordering, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Good. Very good. Okay. Thank you. I think Commissioner Lakewood probably drove by the LaVenture job more than anybody else yeah. in the city. <laughs> probably. Probably. That doesn't surprise me one bit. So are they are they putting in a stoplight there? Is that the plan? Yeah. Or realize, yeah. yeah. When is is that after we're done? What's the delay on do we know? Far I'm not sure what the timeline is on the city Yeah, I don't know the exact they we're said, not in charge of repaving that whole area, right? No, that's why we got it. We're, oh, okay. We're gonna do we have to do some pavement, but it doesn't have to be, you know, okay. We have to restore it, but it has to be pretty right. We're gonna come right anyway. Yeah. I thought they were gonna go spring. Spring of this year, I feel like we're getting right, right down. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think they were saying summer is what they're. Yeah, because the other utilities are moving as well. Yes, yes, so they're now doing stuff tonight. Yes, yes, so they're now. Oh, wow! So it's this construction schedule. <clears throat> All right, so we have no new business this evening. Um, there is the monthly budget status update for February. And a recent news article, Judy Reservoir data report. Any commissioner comments this evening? Beware tulip traffic. <laughs> <laughs> so as the sun comes out, right? That's it. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to attend Mount Vernon City Council meeting morning. tomorrow night okay. for the agreement. But other than that, we will adjourn at 5.03 p.m. Thank <laughs> you.